Have you been struggling to get to sleep and your doctor recently prescribed you trazodone? If so, then this video is for you. We're going to go over the best way to take it and review the most common as well as some rare but more concerning side effects that you need to be aware of. Hi there, I'm Dr. Eric Richardson, a board certified family practice physician. I'd like to welcome you to Family Med, a channel that focuses on giving you practical and accurate medical information to help you and your family. If you think this would be something that's helpful to you, make sure you subscribe, hit that notification button, and follow along with us. Today we're going to be talking about trazodone. This is a medication that's been around for a long time. In fact, its original and main use that it was approved for is to treat depression. It's been used in the United States since 1981, but it never really took off as a great option for depression. Now the main reason is it had a really bad side effect. It made everybody sleepy. So as often happens now with medications, we physicians start to use a side effect as something beneficial, and hence why it's mainly used now as a sleep aid. Trazodone belongs to a class of medications called serotonin antagonist and reuptake inhibitor. In the realm of depression, it works on the serotonin system to provide some relief there. It's also the effect though that it has on different serotonin receptors that gives it the sedating effects. Trazodone comes in a tablet form starting at 50 milligrams, all the way up to 300 milligrams. Most people dose it for sleep anywhere from 25 to 100 milligrams, although some may go higher than that. Now most people do well taking it anywhere from 30 minutes to an hour prior to going to bed. Trazodone overall has been shown to be effective in helping you fall asleep, although it's not without its issues. Just like any medication, it can work really well for some, and for others, it either doesn't work or causes side effects that they don't like. Overall though, most people tend to do well with it. Now anytime you're considering medication, you should always weigh the advantages and the disadvantages that may come. For sleep in particular, having a sleep aid can be very helpful. However, it's always best to work on your own natural ways to try to get to sleep before reaching for a medication. Now if you're looking for ways that you can try and get a better night's sleep without having to rely on medication, check out my video here on some natural steps that you can take to get a better night's sleep. So let's go over some of the advantages of using trazodone as a sleep aid. The first of which is that overall has been shown to be effective for many in helping get you to sleep and staying asleep. But besides that, one of the biggest is that it's cheap. It's been generic for a long time, so it's much less expensive than some of your newer sleep aids. Now trazodone is not felt to be as addictive as other medications that are used for sleep. Unfortunately, many are still using benzodiazepines such as Xanax and Valium to get to sleep. These can be very addictive and actually disrupt the beneficial restorative phases of sleep. So trazodone may be a good option to avoid that. That being said, if you're on trazodone for a long time, you still don't want to stop it abruptly. However, you can't get addicted to it. We also find that it is somewhat safer to use the older we get. Many sleep aids are dangerous to take when you start getting above 65. You need to be careful with trazodone as well, but it is felt to be a little bit safer. And finally, if you have sleep apnea, it's felt to be a better choice for many who have this condition, as it doesn't seem to interrupt some of the important phases of sleep. So for most, it's a medicine that when you take it, it does a job. You get to sleep and you don't have to toss and turn for hours. Now, if that's your experience with this medicine, then it's a success. However, this isn't the case for everybody. There are some things that you need to watch for and possible side effects that you may notice. So the first thing that we're gonna go over are the most common side effects. If you're going to have a problem with this medication, the most common things that you may see are, first of all, it can make you sleepy. Hopefully that's the case, but for some it may work too well. It can also make you feel dizzy, it can give you fatigue, or a sense of nervousness. You can have a dry mouth and sometimes some nausea and vomiting. Now, the excessive sleepiness may seem obvious, and maybe for you, you would relish for the opportunity to feel sleepy. But the problem is, and this is usually the main reason why people don't like taking it, is that it can make you wake up feeling really drugged out and groggy in the morning. And some people, that feeling can last into the next day. Now there are some more serious conditions though that you need to be aware of and watch for. The first thing is that trazodone carries what we refer to in the United States as a black box warning. This is a special designation that the FDA requires if there's something especially concerning that you need to watch out for. It does carry a warning about possible suicidal thoughts, especially in young adults and children. Now this is the same warning put on most other antidepressant medications. Now this is certainly not something common, and it's usually found with those who are being treated for depression, but it is something you need to be aware of. We also warn people of the risk of certain cardiac rhythm problems, low blood pressure, 
and increased risk of bleeding. It also can unmask bipolar disorder in some and put them into what we call a manic episode. It can cause low sodium levels in some and rarely can cause issues with a painful, persistent erection in men. And lastly, as we mentioned earlier, if you stop it all of a sudden after being on a long time, it can also cause some withdrawal symptoms. All these more serious side effects are rare, but your chance of it happening does increase with the higher dose that you go. Overall, trazodone can be an effective tool in helping you sleep when everything else has failed. However, because some of these risks, it may not be the first treatment many reach for to help with getting you to sleep. In the recent guidelines from the American Academy of Sleep Medicine, they recommend that you try other sleep aids before reaching to trazodone. I do use it in my practice and it can be very helpful. Now, when we do want to use it though, it's something we just want to watch closely and make sure they do okay with it, and so should you. There really is no one size fits all approach to medicine, so make sure you're working closely with your doctor to see what the best thing is for you. Sleep can be very elusive for many. There definitely are things that you can and should do that do not require medication. However, when those things are not working and you need something to help you sleep, then trazodone can be an option. It's not without its issues and certainly isn't going to work for everybody. But if your doctor thinks that this may be a good option for you, then hopefully you feel a little more informed on the things that you should be watching for. Okay, so that's it for trazodone. I hope you found it to be helpful. If so, do me a favor and go ahead and hit that like button and share it with your friends and family. And if your health is really important to you, consider subscribing and hit that notification button so you don't miss out on any of our future content. Well, thank you so much for joining us today here at Family Med. And as always, please remember, take care of your body because it's the only one you have.